Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. James Gill and today we're going to do a quick clinical skills video on how to pass your OSCE station when it comes to doing a urine dipstick or a urinalysis. This is something that most healthcare professionals, whether HCAs, nurses or doctors, are going to be asked to perform. So it's very important to make sure that we do things correctly. And the first thing about all healthcare is making sure you're looking after yourself. So that's going to mean putting on your gloves and making sure that you're wearing an apron. Here's a top tip for you. Make sure that your apron you apply before you put the gloves on, because otherwise you're not going to be able to do it properly. So having donned your appropriate PPE, you then need to get your sample. So we want to make sure that we can confirm the patient's uh, name and date of birth matches the sample that we think we're going to be analysing. Then we need to actually visually assess the sample. Does there appear to be debris in it? Is it cloudy? Is it murky? Does it look a reasonable colour? Or does it look, for example, bright red, which may suggest hematuria? or perhaps that the patient's been eating a lot of beetroot. What information can we gain from that sample just visually? We then need to get our urine dipsticks. And it's very important to check the expiry date on uh, the bottle here, because even in preparing for this video, I did find that one of the rooms had an expired bottle of uh, urine dipsticks, which were swiftly binned. Now, it's very important when it comes to your urine dipsticks, that you're aware of how long each reagent strip will take to work. So for example, to check for the glucose in the urine, it will take the reagent 30 seconds to give us a test result. Conversely, the leukocyte test will take us 120 seconds before we can accurately read the result there. So make sure you know the different times um, on the sticks that you're using, because they may differ between brand. So with that in mind, make sure you're using the appropriate area, so a clinical sink uh, where you're not going to be um, putting anybody at risk. In terms of having done the urine dip, we're going to place it on a piece of paper towel to make sure we don't get any horizontal contamination between the reagent strips. Once we get the excess urine off the strip, then we can compare it to the urine bottle. Even if we've been incredibly careful not to spill any urine, you can see why it's very important to use gloves because you're going to apply the strip that you've used with the wet urine to the side of the bottle. Once we've completed the test with our reagent strip, we're going to determine what we need to do. If it's a negative test with nothing in it, then we can bin the sample in appropriate clinical waste. If, however, we've found evidence of an infection, we may need to transfer to a different bottle, this being the red-topped container containing boric acid, so that we can send that off to the lab for microscopy, sensitivity and culturing of any potential infections there. Similarly, we're going to want to doff our PPE and place that in the same clinical skills waste bin. So just to recap, in terms of performing our urinalysis, we want to check that we've got the right patient details. We want to doff our um, appropriate PPE. We want to visually inspect the urine. 
We want to make sure that our urine dipsticks are within date. We want to dip our urine and then make sure that we've put our uh, dipstick on the side to make sure there's no cross-contamination. We're then going to wait the appropriate period of time to compare each reagent against the um, our, uh, strip bottle. We're then going to um, make sure we're appropriately disposing of um, our clinical samples. We're then going to wa uh, doff our PPE and then we're going to um, make sure we wash our hands and finally make sure we're going to document our findings with regard to that urine dip. Well, I hope this has been a useful video for yourselves. Please consider liking the video and subscribing and putting comments down below as to what other areas of clinical medicine you'd like us to look at next. Thank you, take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.